it's not very I... princessy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We're back again. Hi, everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That's Lily K. What else is new? We have a few very good things lining up. Nice and slow. He's yeah. doing the thing where she talks to people, and I sit here and go, wow, she's really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I do try. I do try. I'm not going to lie. All right. Very important question. Mm -hmm. What did you watch in the past two weeks? Uh, well, yes. the, the main one, because mm -hmm. we thought we were going to do an episode on it. Yes. But then you couldn't get a hold of it. I went and saw the Fablemans. Yes, you did. I'm sorry. Which I Jenny. really enjoyed. Yes. It was it was a very sweet movie. Oh, it does manage to capture that sense of magic very well. Um, that kid who plays him, not like yes. the, the, the tiny version, but the the like, like yeah. teenager version, yeah. is very clearly wearing contact lenses for the entire movie. <laughs> I'm like, that is not a natural eye colour. You just have to learn to ignore these things. <laughs> and so I was just looking at it like, that's so strange, but okay. <laughs> Ever since you started pointing out that people are wearing like wings, Bad wings. and whatnot, <laughs> I, I notice it now and it's annoying. So thanks for that, Katie. Well, here's the thing. My mother was the one who started pointing this sort of thing out to me. <laughs> thanks, Katie's mom. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> You started it. Yeah, Michelle Williams is, is brilliant in it. Funnily enough, I know he's 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 right there. Paul Dano is there. It made me want to watch Little Miss Sunshine again. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. So I was I don't know. I was just thinking about that as I was watching it because I, I was like, oh, I feel like this is the first time in ages I've seen Paul Dano play a normal person. What else did you watch? And then I also watched a terrible film. <laughs> um, oh. So I was uh, somebody in a Discord server I was part of asked if anybody's seen a movie from 2015 called Remainder. And I was like, I don't know what this movie is. It was a very small release, funded by the BFI, has Tom Sturridge in it. Oh. Um, and I was like, I've never heard of this, but the trailer looks kind of interesting. So I watched it, and it was not good. <laughs> oh, yeah. I never uh, heard not, of that movie. It's no, like... it, it, it's very, very tiny movie. It, I, The only way I was able really to describe it was it felt like watching some guy who just left film school and somehow managed to get a budget. Ah. That's the vibe. Ah. Okay. It's based off of some old book. There's this guy who like has this head trauma, like something falls from the sky and hits him and he gets like a massive settlement. Okay. Um, from it. And he gets obsessed with trying to, because he had, you know, brain damage, he had a lot of memory loss. He gets becomes obsessed with trying to um, use the money from his massive settlement to like recreate memories that he's like starting to get back mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um uh in like these really big elaborate like theater pieces and it's all about like memory and stuff but it's not good <laughs> it's like it doesn't quite ha there's no real point to any of it he's kind of an asshole oh. and um uh when you finish it you're sort of like well I what was the point <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Sound I don't good. know. It was a very interesting watch, okay. um, and I am. I'm not. I'm not upset that I watched it because I got to have a very long and interesting conversation with the person who was like, "Okay, we've spent all evening talking about this. I need to talk to somebody else about this now." Kind of <laughs> a deal. Um, but so that was very fun, uh, and obviously Tom Sturridge is great in it because he's Tom fucking Sturridge. Um, but yeah, the boot movie's not good. <laughs> it's very just sort of like. I'm so smart. Look how cool and interesting I can be with my filmmaking. It's like, you realize this doesn't make any sense, right? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> you there can be open ended. Those... Oh. But you do still need to have kind of a point to the open endedness. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of vibe. Um, other than that, I don't think I, I mean, obviously, I've been watching Legend of Box Market every week, naturally. Yes. In every new episode of Critical Role, and it's going great. Okay. But we're doing as a point. We have an extra episode for you this month because we will be doing a review next week. Yes. Because it didn't fit into our schedule and I went, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do this. We will, we will. Because I'm also waiting for all of it to drop. Yep. Because I'm like, first of all, Katie has to give me uh, trigger warnings. So that already happened. And then we, we have to talk about Ant-Man afterwards. Mm -hmm. So we were like, Extra I was like, well, it's just an extra episode. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to see us throughout this whole month, basically. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Very fun. Be happy. Please. 
Okay. <laughs> Love us. <laughs> Love us. Aggressive. <laughs> Just a tiny bit. I finally managed to watch Megan, which was funny. Oh, yeah. So M3 Gan? Yes, that's the one. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I think it was creepy enough. I think the whole concept was, you know, it had fun and it also, you know, didn't take itself too seriously, which is mm. always fun. Uh, and it was just, a, it was just a good time. It's a good time. It's like 90 minutes. Uh, so oh, I love it's, that. It's not too long. Definitely not too long. Uh, I love the design of, of Megan. It's It just works so well. And, you know, at the beginning, it's like, oh, I, I want to have a Megan. And then as the film proceeds, <laughs> no, no, like, no, 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 no. I take that back. I don't need one. <laughs> But uh, it was it was very fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then uh, I finally watched a man called Otto uh, with Tom Hanks. That was also popping up in the cinema quite a yes. lot. And I hadn't really, I didn't know what it was. Um, um, it is based on a, a Norwegian uh, novel, uh, which is very good. Uh, and uh, Tom Hanks is in this one. And I remember tweeting the trailer saying that I am already crying on the trailer. And yes, I cried on the movie a lot like a lot it's it was it was very sweet very very sweet you got a lot yes of i am very sweet yes and then i will be watching which i'm very excited for because it looks like that uh uh m knight is coming back to his but roots uh i i've heard such divisive things about this movie yes but uh it's... what's it called the knock in the cabin on the wood in the woods <laughs> uh yes i think that's i think it's just knock at the uh, the cabin that would no, make knock, more sense. <laughs> or knock in the woods or something like that. I never know which one is the real title. Hold on. Knock at the cabin. That's the okay. one. Uh, it's currently 68% on, on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, so... it's like I've, I've heard like two sides to it. I've heard people being like, I actually really, really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. And then other people just being like, oh, you yeah. know. <laughs> uh, I mean, it looks, it already looks much better than old, which was fucking awful and just horrible. <laughs> Sorry. You mean old, the beach that makes you old? Yes, that's the one. I suffered <laughs> through that movie. Oh my god. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it does seem like, and people who I know, and, and I respect their opinion, saying that it is actually going Fun. back to, to, to the good old M. Night style and, and in a good way. Not in the in the bad way, uh, <laughs> you know. What I mean. In the way where he adapts yes. to beloved anime and makes everybody white. <laughs> Let's let's not put that in here. Please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you know, it has Jonathan Groff in it, who I love. Oh, dearly. Love Jonathan Groff. Uh, and it, it everyone saying that it's one of uh, the best roles of Dave Bautista. So anyway, let's get into uh, this week's topic, which is the big DC announcement that came on the last day of January. Very stylish, Mister Gone. It it looks. I'm not gonna say promising. Interesting is the word I'd go for. Interesting is the word. It's very James Gunn like. I'm gonna put mm. it like this. Uh, I think yeah. I think I can agree with that. And uh, and we're gonna start off because I'm literally looking at Twitter, <laughs> where I reposted everything that they announced. Uh, the first thing they announced was that uh, we're gonna have a Batman two with Robert Pattinson, right? Hooray! <laughs> and it's coming out in 2025. Mm. So it's a bit far away. It's fine. I don't mind that. Did we watch the first one last year? Yeah. Oh my god. And if something is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds, outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. It's going to belong to DC Elseworlds, which is going to be there, still DC, but separate from the main. I thing. really like this idea. Yeah. I really, really like this idea. I think it makes it very interesting because you've got all the stuff that you can do, like franchise things. Uh -huh. like then you get people who can just be like, I'm going to make something weird. I appreciate that he's keeping them separate. It would be nice to see where they're going to take it. There are already a lot of theories and whatnot of where Robert Pattinson's Batman is oh, going. Robin! <laughs> we're going to get Robin, but we're going to get to I know, it's very true. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so basically Batman, the second Batman film of the Robert Pattinson kind, is coming. And also, it, uh, Elseworlds is going to contain the Joker movie, the second Joker mm -hmm. movie, which I am very Still excited about. Still a strange about. beast. 
<laughs> I'm I'm just so happy because I, I just love Lady Gaga so much that <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying it's going to be bad, but I do feel like it might have bad vibes just in the content. I did look, I like Lady Gaga and I do think Walking Phoenix is brilliant. I really liked his version of the Joker. Mm. I don't trust Todd Phillips. That's who I don't trust. <laughs> Why don't you trust Todd Phillips? Ah, uh, he gives me just this big, I don't know, something there's bad bad vibes. I don't know how to describe it. Bad, hmm. bad vibes. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I do think that the thing that made the first Joker movie interesting were all things that came from Joaquin Phoenix and not from Todd Phillips. That's true. So, That's I true. don't know. But I suppose that, you know, Joaquin Phoenix is still there. So it's like, it's that. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> uh, I think Lady Gaga is the perfect person to choose as his Harlequin, basically, mm. especially if all that is rumored is true, and we're gonna get like a musical kind of. Yeah, that's, Joker that's film? what they keep. That's why I'm like, what the? Fuck? <laughs> no, it's very bizarre. I don't, I don't know what to feel about it yet because we haven't seen anything, and that's fine. And <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it makes sense uh, in this Joker, I think, but or it would make sense because uh, in the whole first movie. Uh, he imagined a whole ass relationship with someone. So it would make sense that he imagines a whole less musical. And it was very musical in the first yeah. one, in a sense of, you know, it, it built a lot of the things on him dancing and music. And uh, yeah, whatnot. I think the way my brain is getting stuck, I think is I'm, I'm too much imagining like a traditional musical. This is clearly not going to be a Probably traditional not, musical. No. <laughs> Almost, I'm, I'm feeling it's probably going to lean more into the idea of like La La Land did a musical, you know? Maybe. In that, it, 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 yes, Lady, <laughs> fucking Christ, what's wrong with my brain? <laughs> yes, La La Land is a musical, but it's not like, it, there's not, like, considering it's called a musical, there's not that much musicalness in it. Yeah. Like, there, is mus there are musical moments, but like, the whole thing isn't really like, a musical there's not really that many musical numbers in it there's yeah. like three <laughs> i think so yeah three or four or something like that that's true or or you know if they're gonna go full musical they can Sweeney, do that sweeney thought is a great example for them very good point i mean come on come on they can do really well with it or it can be just really bad but uh i i do trust the two actors in the main hall so mm. i'm fingers crossed because i'm i, I really uh, like the first movie because of obviously Hawking phoenix uh, mm. uh so i'm hoping that this one is going to be uh even better let's put it this way than the first one was and then uh, we're gonna get i'm gonna butcher this name I am so sorry in advance. Uh, so in Ellsford's, we're also going to get Tan Nahisi Coates, Black Superman film. I'm so sorry. I'm I don't know sure. about this one. Yeah, it's it's uh, it was announced uh, as well, along with Joker and Batman. Uh, it's we're going to get a Black Superman. It's cool. It's, it's, you know, I was like, oh, oh, this. OK, OK. Uh, so far, this is all we know. <laughs> This is all the information we have. It's going to come. It's going to be a movie, like a whole list movie. Uh, so, you know, it's it's very interesting and intriguing. Uh, oh, someone linked Michael B. Jordan in here. If they're going to have Michael B. Jordan as a black Superman, <laughs> that's a win for Lily. <laughs> Look, I love that man, okay? Yeah, no, I know. I'm just, I should, yeah. <laughs> Um, I was agreeing with you. I was I was okay. nodding in agreement. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, that's as words, and then uh, we're gonna have a like, a, basically, um, not phases because you know, that's Marvel's thing. That we're gonna have chapters. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now, this what I'm about to tell you is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first thing that was announced that obviously. This is no surprise. We're going to get a new Superman. Okay. Next up is the big one. The true beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. We don't know if he's going to direct Direct. Well. He hasn't decided yet, I don't think, either. Yeah. Uh, also, we don't have any casting news. So that's no. 
you know and i think that's i think that thing. yeah i was gonna say i think that's a good thing too i think it's nice that we get to just sort of discuss that these things are obviously superman is gonna be a god <laughs> in the chapter <laughs> I mean, he oh, be a... right. I sorry. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I saw the confusion in your eyes. I was like, are you going to wait till it drops? I got it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a figured it out. We're all good. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but uh, yeah, not much we know. I think he did talk about it like very briefly, uh, mentioning once again that it's not going to be Henry Cavill. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was but... very kind about the whole thing, actually. It's nice to see him be so candid about mm-hmm. the fact that he's like, the previous leadership very much dicked him over, but also the version of Superman we're doing is not his Superman. We would like to do something with him in the future. It's just not going to be this. Yeah, which is completely fair. Yeah, and it, it is very fair. So, you know, uh, it's, it's we're going to get, that means that we're going to get someone new come in. Uh, mm-hmm. The rumor is that they are looking for someone who's not that well known. Mm-hmm. I love which, that already. Yeah, which is like, as you should be, kind of. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm very much all for more larger movies looking for more unknown actors. I think I mentioned this that my favorite new Superman uh, was Brandon Root, and he was kind of a newbie, mm-hmm. and he got cast as Superman, and I think he did a great job. So you know, come on, you can you can find more people and do a Superman. There you go, or mm-hmm. anyone literally, because we have a lot of announcements. <laughs> what I would like to see more of, generally speaking, is mm-hmm. people getting cast in these sort of larger roles, but not then like tied into doing about a thousand of them. Because that feels very, but you know, the, the Marvel like thing is like, it's like oh, we want to get you in, but we also want you to get you in for like five movies. So this is going to be your life for the next 10 years. Mm. I would like to see more one-off things in these kind of spaces where then you can help to like kickstart an actor's career and then let them go off and do something else that's like different and interesting and then give them the opportunity to come back if they decide to do more as opposed to like really because I mean it just reminds me of I don't know if you how much you know about old Hollywood history but that was a lot of how it used to work yeah yeah, yeah. in the early like um Hollywood days where they'd like you know sign on an actor and be like you're only able to star in these films Mm-hmm, made by this mm-hmm. studio yeah. and it, it i have it you know it, it, my hackles get up when i think about it in the way that they were it, it feels a lot like some of these studios are really pushing to go back to that sort of place i understand the whole discussion around it but at the same time like you know there are all these actors that are doing marvel for example and they all have, all have other projects as well so this it's is not- true i mean it's not it's, i'm not saying that it's like the exact same i just mm. um i have things like like um at the end of the re- most recent Thor movie, and they were like, yeah. Thor will return. And then Chris Hemsworth was like, I don't know that. Like, that <laughs> shit. That shit pisses me off. Jumping on to another race, I think, and very well-known character. Batman is the brave and the bold. The brave and the bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. So all of my knowledge of the various Robins has come from anything that has been in mainstream media and mm-hmm. mostly through the Arkham games, mm-hmm. I guess is probably the best way. So Damian Wayne is actually one of the ones I don't know anything about. <laughs> I did not know that Batman had an actual son. I just thought that he adopted a bunch of kids. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> he uh, just picks up young boys and then it sort of trains them to me. <laughs> which is also very true. It is Bruce Wayne's and Tali Algo's son. So Raz Algo's daughter. Oh, the okay, well. Um, and uh, therefore, Roz is basically the grandfather of Damien, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, which, you know, uh, the whole thing brings up, a, you know, a bunch of roles because we can, we will probably get to see Tali Al Ghul, we're probably going to get to see Raz Al Ghul in this new one. Uh, I, don't, I don't recall reading The Brave and the Bold, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Uh, maybe I did, but again, it's been a while since mm-hmm. I picked up a DC comic. Uh, but uh, I just know that I really lo- like the whole Batman and Robin thing going on, and you know they did some interesting things with it. Uh, and and we need a live action Robin. We need a live action Robin. I am interested to see this version, but I I'm 
I maintain that I do think that Battenton getting like uh oh god, who what's the name of Nightwing? I'm I'm very bad with names. Uh, uh Jason. No, Jason's not Nightwing. Yeah. Jason Todd is Nightwing. No, Jason Todd's Red Hood. Is he? Yeah. A few moments later. Huh. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. A few moments later. Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson. Oh shit. Yeah, I just I feel shit. like having him pick up somebody like Dick Grayson. I don't know, but I I feel like having him be like you know in like adoptive dad mode. Can you imagine that with? Yes, I can. I think it would be really interesting. Not like actively like, oh, I'm actually going to be your dad, but like, you know, accidental adoptive dad sort of vibes. Mm. Like, I'm just, I'm looking after you now. It would be really interesting because especially this, this version of him is so based on the fact that he's so actively separated from everybody else. So give him a foil, but he actively has to bring something new into his life and like Mm. that kind of vibe. That's what I'm thinking. You think about it. What if what if they did like the Jason Todd stuff? Oh, I would love that. Him. They could get Jensen to play Jason Todd in live action because he did the voice for uh, Red Hood. It's true, I feel like he's a bit old for it now. <gasps> Not in a bad way. Do <laughs> <laughs> remember Jason? Jensen's in his what? He's in his forties at this point. He is, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying he is old. I just think he'd be too old for. Also, it's not a bad thing to be old. <laughs> it's like, how dare you? <laughs> and then we're going to get a bunch of things that I never read from this. Yeah, th- I think this is part of what makes this. Um... Very James Gunn. <laughs> well, very James Gunn, and also just very interesting in that of he's course. gone for a lot of things that are quite, I think, arguably obscure, mm-hmm. which is cool. And I'm into that. <laughs> Same. Same, to be fair. Like, I mean, I think he already proved it, but uh, basically Guardians that you can pick up something that's not that well known and, and make it into something incredibly celebrated and good. Mm-hmm. So uh, one of these things is, I'm so sorry, any DC fans, if, if I'm just dumb. Next up is a TV series called Booster Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. I don't know anything about this character. I'm not it, he looks cool, but it's it's going to be it's going to be one of the TV shows because they're going to do TV uh. and movies uh uh as well. So which is very good, very interesting. Bit morally, but that's fine. They don't mind that. And it's going to come out on HBO, I think. So that deal is. I think a lot of these things are going to be HBO properties, right? Because, I mean, it is Warner Brothers Discovery. And then the other one that was very interesting because in the post it doesn't say, um, but James Gunn did talk about it. Uh, There's going to be another TV series that's going to be animated. And Mm -hmm. uh, if these are going to be the, or if this is going to be the animation style, I am already in love with it. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're going to do that's a little bit different at DC is we're going to have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. Okay, interesting. Which is like... This picture alone is the most James Gunn thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> are, you, are you looking at the booster? I'm looking one? at the one that was... Or... Uh, no, 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 the Creature Commanders the creature one. Co- the, the picture that's on the, the yeah. disgusting film tweet that you retweeted, yep. I'm like, that. I've never seen anything more... <laughs> And that's that's Weasel there. Who we yeah, I thought know. he looked familiar. <laughs> we who we got to know from uh, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. So you know there are already at least one familiar face in there. <laughs> but uh, it looks cool. I really like. If this is going to be the the animation style, which I'm guessing it is, I I really like it. I really dig it. Uh, it looks fun, and I really like what what James said that it's it's going to mix live and animated together which is just so cool. And then one of my favorite uh, announcements, and I I think I even texted you like immediately. Mm. Waller. This is a story of Amanda Waller played by Viola Davis. 
Viola Davis is gonna team up with members of Team Peacemaker, and this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. So, so cool. She was always the most like the most inspired piece of casting for that. Yes. Um, uh, and she kills it every time. Every time. <clears throat> Just so good. I, 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 but like for me, she is a wonder war. Yeah. Period. Like I would have been, I'm not going to lie. I would have been very upset if they would have let done her anybody go. else. Yeah, absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, <laughs> no. Like I'm like, no, no. And then they, they announced this. I'm like, okay. I, oh. <laughs> I nearly cried. Uh, it's going to be a TV series again. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be limited or like a full-blown uh, TV series with possible second season, but I'm just glad that Viola Davis is back. I'm just happy. I'm just happy with that. Uh, and then... And that brings me to Swamp Thing, the last thing we're going to talk about. A very dark horror story in the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing is going to get a comeback because they already tried Ooh. once yeah that's that when was was i think the show was good as far as i heard it was and then it it just sort of died very quickly after one season very upsetting generally mm -hmm. speaking um i if i remember correctly i'm trying to think of exactly what happened um how this goes but maggie steve Flutter, mm -hmm. who i as one of my favorite writers, mm -hmm. I believe wrote a Swamp Thing book at some point. Uh, it's this one is going to be a horror movie, so it's not mm. a TV series again. It's it's like DC's own horror film. Fun. It sounds fun, but I am always afraid. When now <laughs> now I am very afraid that when they say like you know when they announce that Doctor Strange is going to be a horror movie, it's mm. it's not. Yeah, but here's but <laughs> like here's the thing. Yes. Here's the thing. Okay. Marvel make Marvel movies. We all know what the vibe of a Marvel movie is now. They can kind of try and push it in one direction or another, but in the end, they're going. To, it's going to be capital M, capital M Marvel movie. <laughs> TM, right? I think what DC have already proved over the many years, even if they you know go back and forth on on stuff, mm. is that they do tend to really dig into genre pieces. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling if they were going to make a horror movie, James Gunn's going to let them make a horror movie. That's true. You know? That's true. I mean, James Gunn is really good in horror. So, okay, I have faith again. You come with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't really, I, I know this is the, the, this entire thing is very much out of my territory for me. I'm talking in very, as the big old outsider. Um, You're doing but, great. You're doing thank you. Great. <laughs> you just convinced me so it's so good uh, and then we're gonna get okay the next thing is a big premiere hbo television series called lanterns it's not just gonna be one green lantern because yes we're gonna get hall jordan who's they put an s on the end yes <laughs> but uh uh we also gonna get john stewart as well who was my personal favorite green lantern and the animated series uh, not the late night host no <laughs> It would be fun, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, ah, okay, now you made it interesting again. I I wonder how Ryan Reynolds is. <laughs> Look, we all know that Ryan Reynolds does do. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is the number one hater of that movie. I've never seen it, nor have I ever been interested in seeing it. <laughs> but like, you're better every, off without it. <laughs> everybody knows that Ryan Reynolds hates that movie more than anybody else. Green Lanterns aside, we're going to get... Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're going to turn that into a big science fiction epic film. It's going to be the version of Supergirl who got to... Uh, I think she lived on a piece of Krypton that stayed intact, basically, or somehow okay. uh, she was able to survive there and was raised there and had to see everyone die around her. Fun. Uh, so it's it's a much darker take on Supergirl, basically. But like, here's the question. Yes. Based off of everybody who I saw watch the Supergirl series. Yes. Is did they get her like to be? Did she get to be a lesbian? 
because <laughs> there was a lot of talk. I don't look. I never watched Supergirl. I didn't rewatch really any of the DC shows on the CW. Debbie, yeah. really speaking, but I did see a lot of people who were really into the idea of, of Supergirl and the woman who Katie McGrath, who I can't remember the like Lexi, like, uh, the, 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 the other Luther, the other yeah. Luther. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they were very. It was a big thing. It was. Um, and then, and then we are going to get Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is the story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. Yeah, they did. I like. I love the concept. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. in. I'm into that uh, very much. Too. I just. Um, uh, I. I I'm, I'm don't like Gal Gadot very much, so I kind of don't want her to come back. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, we agree on that. Uh, but uh, I think her f- fate in these movies and universe and whatnot is undecided currently. Mm. They already cancelled the third one. Yeah. Which I am not <laughs> about because the second one was rubbish. <laughs> Oh my god, I suffered through that movie. I didn't watch it. And it came out and everybody was like, this is bad. And I went, okay. It is very bad. I I just felt bad for for poor Pedro because he did everything. He was the best part of it. And that's it. We love Pedro Pascal. Okay, he's the hottest guy I've ever seen. (laughs) Why does he live in Arkansas? And then they did a surprise announcement, which which was posted later, uh, which is another like team up movie. Uh, and I actually just read about this uh, today that once James Gunn announced it, uh, they sold out on all the comics. Uh, wow. Everyone went to to pick it up. It's the authority. The authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters. We are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our primary DCU characters. I have never heard of this one. I have no fucking idea what this is. <laughs> uh, it looks cool. That woman what? sure does have some tits on her. Yes. Uh, it looks cool. I don't now I got to make sure that it looks like the people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about it, but if if I'm correct, and if I'm seeing this picture correctly, and that's whole girl in the background, then I am already very happy because mm. I was looking forward to a whole girl announcement who is one of my favorite DC characters of all time. Uh, she can still come along. We already got hope. Here's how we can still will. Wish. <laughs> but uh, this one looks just, you know, epic. I don't know. I look at this picture that they added to it and it's like, epic. <laughs> sure. You, you know what yeah. I mean? I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, and I think, I think these were all the announcements regarding mm. the new chapter of DC. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, again, we're going to say this is promising. It's, it looks very interesting. And I do think, I, I will say this, that if they do this right, even if there's going to be like weaker entries in there, I, I think this, this can be uh, good, like really good uh, on the long run. Uh, mm. Also, I think if the first chapter fails, then there's no point in trying <laughs> to be fair uh i know i'm very mean but like at this point uh dc did feel like it's dead for a long time now so maybe this is this is all that they needed to restart and i mean like... i was always happy with the idea that we could just let dc do like little disparate things here yeah, and but there. they wanted to connect everything so even if it worked like separately it was always them who were like oh yeah uh, no no be, i agree i just think that it, it, since then i i was more interested in, especially because marvel are so much doing that mm. over on their side and it's like yeah so sure, we've kind of done that do something different yeah. yeah i agree i mean they work perfectly uh well on their own uh if they just let them but you know, they just so desperately want to do the same thing as Marvel, just not taking the time. And I think now looking at this and seeing how they want to take the time with it and, mm. and just build it up, it can work. It could work. I don't know. We'll see. Because but I think the other co- side of it is how much are people going to have like franchise fatigue by the time that this sort of stuff comes out? Because that's very much a thing at the moment. I feel it constantly. <laughs> 
uh, I'm not going to say I don't feel it because uh, there were points where I was like, I do love you, but I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I did something that's like, I mean, you get it. We're getting it everywhere at the moment. It's the way that Netflix are just consistently mm -hmm. putting out like just stuff. And like none of it has any, they, they clearly, it's like, it's like the shotgun blast thing. They just kind of keep throwing things and then being like, well, I didn't work and then killing it immediately. Mm. And all that shit passwords they're sharing. Oh my God. They're really not, they're really fucking it up at the one. Yeah. Did you read about the, um, the, the Netflix, uh, Squid Game reality show? The, the one that, uh, sent people to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, I, I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to make a note of it. I'm going to find the Variety article because it's fucking dystopian. It is. Oh. I mean, it is. You're reading it like, oh my god! Like you watched the whole TV show about how this is horrific, and then you really just went and did that and did anyway. It. Okay. Did someone nobody, die? <laughs> nobody died. Okay. But they were playing that red light, green light in like <gasps> um, zero degree temperatures in oh. Bedford. It was, uh, and they were doing it. They they got people up at like three thirty in the morning. Um, they uh, they said that the game was going to take two hours to shoot. It took them six hours. Um, they weren't allowed to move for up to 30 minutes because they were um, doing things like checking to make sure if anybody had moved. Uh, four, three, Netflix said that three people fainted. Somebody in the article said four people fainted. Oh, fun. <laughs> Bonkers. Oh, like, oh, what are you actually doing? <laughs> And what, what they were shot with paintball or something? If they were... they had like squibs on them apparently. Okay. And because they on the, in the article they were explaining that everybody they kind of brought everybody out and everybody was wearing big coats and like warm packs. They took those away from them. Had to make sure that they because they were all wearing the tracksuits. They had to make sure they were open so that you could see the blood and the numbers on their things. It was in the cold snap we had like a month or two ago where it like. We weren't getting above zero degrees in the daytime. But if they're going to make it the same way as it was in the series, it, the whole point wasn't that they froze to them. So no, 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 no. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> what oh, the God. fuck? <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, I will I will find the article because I, I was reading it the other day and it's like, what in the ever-loving fuck is happening over there? <laughs> That's so good. Netflix, come on. Come on. Like, you know, you still have to bring us TV shows that we love, so... Found a, uh, yeah, there was a really interesting... I don't remember her name, but there's somebody who does, like, these little videos on TikTok. Um, but I see them on Twitter because I don't have TikTok. Yes. <laughs> uh, who she was explaining about how the reason that Netflix... And we've gone completely off topic, but this is just fun for anybody at the end of the video. Um, uh, the, part of the reason that Netflix are having such trouble adapting to the changing landscape was because they were first and they keep thinking that if they keep doing the same stuff like when they were first they they don't see that there's a competitive market in the way now uh, and they won't that makes sense. Uh, they won't change to keep up with the market and instead they're just sort of basically yelling at their consumer base for not engaging with them in the same way they did at the beginning when the market's completely different hmm. that's interesting it, it also makes sense mm-hmm I will I will find the the thing and I'll link it because it was it was from this person's Twitter and I just don't remember her name at the moment but I see her do these little videos a lot and she's very smart and I like her a lot. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Link it, link. We definitely need the link. But then, uh, but yeah. Um... Oh, they also cancelled because that was the other thing. Uh, they announced on I think on the same day that uh, uh, Doom Patrol and Titans are ending. Yeah, they did. Which is like, you know, I haven't watched Doom Patrol, but I've watched Titans, which was like, eh. <laughs> it took the time away, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very surprised that they, they are going to uh, end it, both of them, because they were both, like, favourites, I believe. Doom Patrol in particular was loved by a lot of yeah. people. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit surprised by that decision. Yeah, I'm real, I'm real tired of just shit being, like, cancelled. It, like the whole thing, I don't know, capitalism. <laughs> it is. It's like, I'm tired of it all. <laughs> it is. It truly is. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So that was our DC talk. Yes. 
<laughs> which which went into <laughs> other directions as well. Uh, let's see, let's see how it turns out. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna give up on DC just yet because I do love the comics. So hopefully, uh, this this really is gonna be the one thing that they needed to just have like an organized let's do this uh, kind of thing. If not, at least they tried. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know. That, that's that uh, and yeah we're going to be back next week as well as we already mm-hmm. mentioned uh, it's going to be the review of the Legend of Vox Machina uh, season 2 uh, and with confirmed Mighty 9 animated series coming yes. out Katie is so excited <laughs> oh, the way I screamed it was <laughs> like we were like they literally the day before were like oh we've got an announcement coming out tomorrow and everybody was like okay what's the announcement Travis Travis, what's the announcement? They were really quiet about it. And then Laura went on like morning television in the US to talk about their series. And she was like, oh yeah, we got an announcement coming in about an hour. And we're like, the fuck is this announcement? <laughs> and then they dropped that shit. And you lost it. I lost my mind. I figured you did. <laughs> Which Which is sh- good shit. <laughs> it's getting animated. <laughs> Yay! It's fine, I'm totally it's... normal about this. You are completely normal. Uh, and then we're going to be back after that uh, talking about Ant Man uh, and the Wasp. And then we're going to have to be going to go. Huh? We're going to get Jeffrey. Our dear friend Jeffrey. He's That's making... our next like, four episodes for you then. It is. There you go. Uh, uh, Jeffrey is going to make his uh, debut as Perry in The Last of Us this weekend. Uh, so very much looking forward to that. Well, I say this weekend. By the time this episode comes out, he would have already it, it, been in yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So... yeah. 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 You've already seen Jeffrey by this point. Uh, we love Jeffrey here. You all know that. Uh, so, you know, give him all the love. Woo. All the love. Woo. Um, yeah. And this was us for today. Uh, take care, subscribe, wait, hold on, promotion, subscribe, uh, set the notification bell, uh, you know, comment, enjoy the like. premiere with us, like, leave a comment, what do you think about the new DC slate? Yes. Uh, do we like it? Do we I have like any it. thoughts about things that we don't know anything about? Let us know. <laughs> and uh, see you around, uh, strangers. I, I'm going to come up with something better. You do, you do, <laughs> yes. you're coming, it's, it's been, what, two years? You're trying to come up with an outro now? I, yes. <laughs> Look, with the rest of us, it's easy because I'm just going to, I'm just saying enter and survive and that's it. That's our outro, <laughs> which works. But here, I, I we will come up with something. Maybe you have Bye, to come guys. up with something. Come on. <laughs> All right. Fade out. We're leaving. Fade out now. Bye. <laughs>